Hi all, it's Tim Vollmer. We know that researchers are not guaranteed to be insulated from international privacy regulation simply because their data collection is conducted within the United States. Data that is collected solely within the US may be produced, say, in France or created by French citizens. The data may have been originally provided with the expectation and under the terms of use that appropriate local data protections would be followed. Many of these factors that should be taken into consideration may not be documented or readily accessible to a diligent researcher who inspects information prior to collection. Ethically, legally, and practically, it is not safe to assume that the U.S. definition of privacy is the sole relevant consideration. The context in which individuals share information online should play an important role in the sharing and use of information, even if U.S. or state privacy law doesn't cover it. One example we'll talk about is the General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR. The GDPR is a recently enacted regulation in the European Union that deals with protection of privacy and the collection and management of data. At the core of GDPR is personal data. This is the type of information that allows a living person to be directly or indirectly identified from data that's available. Personal data can include something obvious, such as a person's name, location data, or an online username, or it can be something that may be less apparent, such as an IP address. There are also a few special categories of personal data that are given greater protections, including information about racial or ethnic origin, political opinions, religious beliefs, membership of trade unions, genetic and biometric data, health information, and data around a person's sex life or orientation. The GDPR aims to give individuals better control over their personal data. It enacts technical measures that dictate how businesses and other entities process personal data of EU citizens. Businesses and data controllers are required to enable safeguards to protect user data so that data sets are not publicly available by default and can't be used to identify subjects. The GDPR was adopted in April 2016 and became enforceable beginning May 2018. If a business doesn't process an individual's data in the correct way, it can be fined by the EU regulator. Even though GDPR is focused on the protection of EU citizens, it can also apply to entities that are based outside of the EU. So if a business located in the US does business or has users in the EU, then the GDPR could apply to it. In turn, TDM researchers should care about regulations such as GDPR because social media companies and other organizations that provide products and services to EU citizens is directly affected by these data protection rules. First, let's take a brief look at how the GDPR applies to data processors. These processors must follow seven protection and accountability principles when dealing with personal data. Processing must be lawful, fair, and transparent to the data subject. Processing must only be for the legitimate purposes specified explicitly to the data subject at the time of collection. It should collect and process only as much data as absolutely necessary for the purposes specified. Processors must keep personal data accurate and up to date. Processors may only store personally identifying data for as long as necessary for the specified purpose. Processing must be done in such a way as to ensure appropriate security, integrity, and confidentiality of the data. And finally, the data controller is responsible for being able to demonstrate GDPR compliance with all of these principles. Next, let's briefly look at the rights that must be provided to the subject of the data collectors. These are the users, and they have the right to be informed, the right of access, the right to rectification of the data, the right to erasure, the right to restrict processing, the right to data portability, the right to object to the data, and other rights in relation to automated decision making and profiling. So as we saw from the previous list, one of the user rights is the right to erasure, otherwise known as the right to be forgotten. And Article 17 of the GDPR states, the data subject shall have the right to obtain from the controller the erasure of personal data concerning him or her without undue delay 
and the controller should have the obligation to erase personal data without undue delay. This right can be invoked when a particular situation arises. Some of these include when the personal data are no longer necessary in relation to the purposes for which they were collected or processed, when the data subject withdraws consent, when the personal data have been unlawfully processed, and when the personal data must be erased to comply with a legal obligation in the European Union or member state law, as well as a few other reasons. We can see that under the GDPR, there are powerful mechanisms for the protection of personal data and also ways that users can demand that personal data be redacted from the holdings of data processors. So what does this mean for you as a TDM researcher? And how could complicated regulations like GDPR affect the utility of particular data sets for research? If a data set was thought to have been processed appropriately and a researcher wishes to use it to conduct TDM, then what are the effects later if the data set begins to develop holes since some of the information has been removed due to the right to be forgotten or another redaction? We've seen how the GDPR gives individuals better control over their personal data, even up to the point where they may request that personal information be removed from a business that collects or processes user data. And it's clear from reading parts of the GDPR that if personal data are being processed for scientific research purposes, the regulation indeed applies to that processing. At the same time, there are important limitations and exceptions to the rules that can provide a safety valve for particular types of activities. For example, we were just talking about Article 17, which is the right to be forgotten. And this right is not an absolute user right. Article 17, as well as Article 89, delve more deeply into the safeguards relating to processing for archiving purposes that are in the public interest, as well as for purposes for, for scientific, historical, and statistical research. These safeguards say that the GDPR provisions will not apply when certain circumstances arise, for example, for exercising the right of freedom of expression and information, for reasons of public interest in the areas of public health, for archiving purposes related to scientific, historical, and statistical research, for the establishment, exercise, or defense of legal claims, and for a few other reasons. So to wrap up this section, we've seen some strong limitations and exceptions applicable for research, including for text and data mining. These constraints of privacy law and regulation can give TDM researchers some flexibility to conducting the research without violating the law. But that doesn't mean that we feel great about collecting, analyzing, and disseminating this content, even if it's not technically private from a legal perspective. In the next set of videos, we'll talk about why we might encounter ethical considerations and how we can approach them.